He is the, the vine. He is the vine by which we can live and by which and through whom we can bear good fruits. May the Lord bless us as we worship him this morning. We'll begin with our first hymn, hymn 631. Lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, 
one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The theme of our worship today is the reminder that our Lord Jesus as the vine enables us, the branches, to bear fruit that is pleasing to his pleasing to him and glorifies his name. In the first reading from God's Word, we see exactly that as the early Christian church glorifies God by sharing with one another that not one person among God's people was in need. May Christ's love for us also inspire us to love one another and help one another in their need. We read from Acts chapter 4. The whole group of believers was one in heart and soul. No one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they held everything in common. The apostles continued to testify about the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ with great power, and abundant grace was on all of them. There was not a needy person among them. For from time to time, those who were owners of lands or houses sold them, brought the proceeds received from what was sold, and laid it at the apostles' feet. It was distributed to each one according to what anyone needed. Joseph, who was called Barnabas by the apostles, which is translated son of encouragement, a Levite, a native of Cyprus, sold a field that belonged to him he brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for today is a reminder that our soul <coughs> needs to cling to the Lord for every good and perfect gift, and that inspired by his goodness, we ought to love one another. We sing this morning Psalm 63, which can be found in the Psalter, the great book, Psalm 63c. Thank you.
reading from God's Word will also serve as the basis of the sermon is recorded by the Apostle John in his first letter, chapter 3, beginning at verse 18. Dear children, let us love not only with word or with our tongue, but also in action and truth. This is how we know that we are of the truth and how we will set our hearts at rest in his presence. If our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God. We also receive from him whatever we ask because we keep his commands and do what is pleasing in his sight. This then is his command that we believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and that we love one another just as he commanded us. The one who keeps his commands remains in God and God in him. This is how we know that he remains in us. We know it from the Spirit whom he has given to us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise now for the reading of the Gospel. The Gospel lesson for today is taken from John chapter 15. We be begin with the first verse. Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he is going to be cut off. And he prunes every branch that does bear fruit, so that it will bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I am going to remain in you. A branch cannot bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Likewise, you cannot bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. The one who remains in me, and I in him, is the one who bears much fruit, because without me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, Ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you continue to bear much fruit and prove to be my disciples. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Please be seated for our next hymn in 728. <laughs>
grace and peace are all yours and mine because we have a God that loves us and has shown us that love in sending us Jesus the Christ, who lived and died for us and rose again for our justification. Amen. God's word for our encouragement this morning is recorded by the Apostle John, a reminder that we are to love not only with word or with tongue, but also in action and truth. This is God's Word. Brothers and sisters in Christ, can you think of a time when you stood before a very famous person? Maybe you stood in line waiting to get somebody's autograph. Maybe you just happened to see that person and they talked to you. How did you feel? Excited? Nervous? Maybe a little terrified? I thought, for example, this morning, if Giannis from the box, I can't say his last name, if Giannis stood before us today in our presence, I think we'd be, first of all, impressed at how tall he is, but then to think I'm standing in the presence of a great basketball player. I want his autograph. Have you ever stood in the presence of someone or something where you felt entirely helpless and you thought you could die? Pray that you haven't been in a circumstance like that. To ever be a victim of crime where someone has a gun pointed at you, that has to be terrifying. Or to be suddenly out in the woods and there's a bear and there's its cub over there, that would be a terrifying feeling. Or to be in the Midwest and see these tornadoes coming your way, thinking it's inevitable, it's going to destroy our house, what's going to happen to me? The thought of danger, the thought of death, terrifies. This morning we are reminded we will have to stand before our holy God someday. And now how does that make you feel? Since God is a holy God and demands we be absolutely perfect as he is perfect, and since he says the soul that sins must die, the thought of standing in God's presence is, honestly, terrifying. It's not something that by nature we look forward to. But it is by the Holy Spirit and it is through the word of God we are reminded of God's grace and his mercy the psalmist David could say, God, your love, your mercy is better than life itself. In knowing God loves us and is merciful, forgiving us, we are very much excited and looking forward to that day when we stand in the presence of our holy God. This letter that John wrote is written in many ways because of people that were out there teaching false doctrine. People that were talking about things they knew and were convinced of, but the things they knew and convinced of were inner feelings, not what God says in his word. They felt, for example, that, that they were so spiritual who needs the Bible? God talks to me, and that's all I need. These people did not believe in the virgin birth of Jesus. These people did not believe or teach about Jesus' atoning death or his resurrection that justifies. Really, these people were about inner feelings, feelings that were leading them away from God. John wrote in this letter, 
These false prophets are from the world and speak from the viewpoint of the world, and the world listens to them. We, however, the apostles, are from God, and whoever knows God listens to us. But whoever is not from God does not listen to us. As you hear those words, can't you see that we are living in similar times? The world is all about inner feelings and what they feel is right. Push aside what God says in his word, that doesn't matter. The fact is, God has revealed to me these things, and therefore, these are true. And throughout history, it's been this way. The world, not wanting to listen to God, has made up its own rules. Things like, if you become a monk, or a nun, and you give up all of the blessings of this world, and you live in a cave, and if you beat yourself for the sins you've committed, you're fine. God will take you to heaven. Or if you do so many good things, or if you give so much money to your church or some charity, you can be absolutely sure God will take you to heaven. Or to think that it is through meditation, apart from God's word, that God will speak to us and guide us and we'll get to heaven that way. And as a result, how many of you haven't heard what the world says? It doesn't matter what you believe in, just as long as you believe. Where does that thought come from? It does not come from God. It comes from the Father of all lives, who would want us to stop listening to God and His Word and stop and start following and continue following what our hearts desire. Your hearts can't be wrong. You know better than God. As a result, people, although they think they know God, do not know God. And they go further and further away from Him. They become people who say, we're not that sinful. Whereas John says, if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves. The truth is not in us. Brothers and sisters in Christ, rather than listen simply to our heart, we need to listen to what God says in His Word. And it's because of what God says in His Word that our heart today, and especially on that day when we stand in God's holy presence, our heart is terrified. The scriptures remind us that God is a holy God and does not leave the guilty unpunished. He reminds us that we have to be perfect just like him, and if we sin even in just one spot, we're guilty of breaking the whole law. We're reminded that no mortal man can stand in God's presence and live because we are sinners. That thought ought to terrify us. We ought to listen to God's word and be reminded when it comes to salvation, it's not something you or I can achieve by our super knowledge, by our super good works. We all fall far short of God's glory. We deserve his wrath and his punishment. So there is that, that when we're going to stand in God's presence, it's a part of us that's going to be terrified. But looking to God and His Word, we see so much more about our God, that He's not just a righteous God that doesn't leave the guilty unpunished. He's a merciful and compassionate and gracious God who loves us, who remembers our sins no more. Where does the Scripture say that? It shows us that God so loved the world, he gave us his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. He that believes in is baptized shall be saved. 
Jesus says, I'm going to prepare a place for you, and I'll come back and take you to be with me. The scriptures make it perfectly clear that in God's eyes, we are forgiven based on what Jesus has done. That's why the psalmist David talked about clinging, clinging to the mercy and goodness of God. What is there to fear if God is on your side? What is there to fear if you know God loves you and promises to work everything out for the good? There is nothing to be afraid of. Only joy and peace and hope about the future. But such peace and joy and hope isn't something you or I come to of our own thinking or choosing. All of this is a gift to us by God through the Holy Spirit. It says in our text, this, then, is God's command that we believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and that we love one another just as he commanded us. Faith in Jesus and good works. Neither of these things can we do on our own, by our own strength, by our own choosing. Faith is a gift of God given to us by the working of the Holy Spirit, St. Paul wrote, no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus, be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. And if there are things that are good and pleasing in God's sight, they are only good and pleasing because they've been worked in us by the Holy Spirit. For the things that come from us are sinful, but the fruit of the Holy Spirit is love and joy and peace and patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. As we remain in the scriptures, just like the apostles did, they knew with confidence we are God's children and God is our Father. He hears our prayers and answers those prayers for the glory of his name and for our good. The Lord is never going to leave us or forsake us. He will bless us and has blessed us already. Brothers and sisters in Christ, so as we heard in the gospel lesson for today, the Lord used the word remain eight times. Remain. Remain in me. Remain in my word. And I will remain in you. Because when we remain in the word, that's where God strengthens our faith with his Holy Spirit. That's where God reminds us heaven has been accomplished and achieved for us by Jesus. That there is a place waiting for us. It's in Scripture, this is, and in Christ, this is where we find confidence. Yes, our heart will continue to condemn us and say, we should love one another better. Yes, we should. We should have been more kind and patient to our neighbors and family members. Yes, we should. We should have loved God more. We should love God more every day. Yes, we should. Our hearts condemn us. Justly so, because we have sinned and fall short of God's glory. But there is a peace that surpasses all understanding, and Christ gives it to you in his word, by his spirit. So remain in him. Listen to him. Eat what is good, what is a free gift given to you by God. Even though then your heart may condemn you, you can say to your sinful flesh, and you can say to Satan, away from me. I am redeemed by Christ, the crucified and risen Lord. He is mine, and I am his. Amen. Please rise.
The peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard you and keep you in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We join in confessing our Christian faith which God has given to us through word and sacrament. We join in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This time our thank offering will be brought before the Lord.
perfect gift. You are the one who supplies all our needs. We thank you especially for sending your son Jesus into this world to seek and to save us from all of our sins. In him alone do we have the hope of eternal life. Lord Jesus, you are the way, the truth, and the life. It is only through you we can come to God the Father, stand in his presence, and live. Strengthen us through word and sacrament that we may trust in you alone for our forgiveness and salvation. Through your gospel, purify our hearts and fill us with joy and praise that we may be eager to do what is good and what brings glory to your name. O Holy Spirit, it is only through you we can believe and confess that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. It is only through you we can bear any fruits of faith that are pleasing in your sight. Help us to remain in Jesus as branches remain in the vine, that we may have life and strength in him. Help us to continue to grow each day in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, that we may share your word of life with those around us, that they then too may come to the knowledge of the truth and be saved. O triumph God, you are the maker of heaven and earth, and you are the one who can help us in every time of need. We pray for those who are ill and weak, and for those who cannot be with us here today. Watch over them and strengthen them with your sure and faithful promises. Move us in love to not only pray for your family of believers, but also to help them and support them in their time of need. We also pray for those who have been affected by the storms and tornadoes in places like Nebraska, Iowa, Kansas, and Oklahoma. We thank you for sparing so many lives and for preventing more deaths that could have happened. Help us and our government to provide for the needs of those who have lost homes and property. Comfort those who mourn and fill their hearts with joy as they see your tender hand providing for them through your loving and caring people. We also pray for those who are the victims of war and crime. Bring peace so that your gospel may be proclaimed and so that your love may inspire their love for you and for their fellow man. We ask all these things in Jesus' name, and we also join in the prayer he has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless us and keep us. Amen. Please be seated for our closing hymn, 595.
good for us to be here, to be strengthened by our Lord's promises and to know how much He loves us and therefore how much He's going to work everything out for our blessing. May we continue to worship Him and trust in Him. And to do that, we need, first of all, to remain in His work. May God help us to do that. I uh, would like to announce, so this af afternoon or evening, there is a Wells Youth Night that's going to be held at Martha Luther High School. It is um, Nerf War, so ammunition and, and weapons will be provided. Uh, maybe bring safety glasses if you're going to. Um, Catechism for this year has finished, but we are doing a review for the 8th graders, and as we're looking ahead this month of May, coming up, uh, May 19th is a special day for two young members of our church, Ryan Kavitsky and Philip Oblender, as they will, having been confirmed in their faith by the Lord and His Word, they will express that boldness um, before you, and we will receive them with joy as communicant members of our church. Um, Next Sunday, there will be a ladies' aid meeting following worship. Usually we do it the second Sunday of the month, but being the second Sunday of the month is Mother's Day, and that might infringe on somebody's activities. Uh, we'll bump it up to the first Sunday of May. And uh, note that in May, Ascension Day service, it's a service that I think people want to go to, but then they forget it because it's just a Thursday, and the rest of the world isn't selling uh, I don't know, Ascension, things about Jesus going up into heaven. They haven't thought of something to market for Ascension. So I, I, I like Ascension for that reason. It's a church service. It's a worship, time for worship. And plus we get uh, members from our area churches that also are planning on coming. So please come um, May 9th. Church council meeting I did not have on the calendar. That's in your mailboxes. Please know uh, gentlemen, that we had decided the 23rd, that's a Thursday, to have our meeting after the evening service at, at 7.30. Um, one other uh, piece of news, circuit news, Pastor Lucas Praver from St. Saint, Saint Paul in Wisconsin Rapids did was led to accept the call he was given to Trinity in Watertown, Wisconsin. He is staying then in our district, but not in our conference or, or circuit. I don't think you necessarily know Pastor Fraber, as I don't think I've had him preach here. Uh, his uh, associate, um, Peter Plagans, did preach for me one time, and you might recall him. But we pray for St. Paul's congregation that they may be blessed with the servant of, his, of God's choosing. That's all the announcements I have in the fellowship hall. We'll be recognizing birthdays and anniversaries, so if you have time, please come and join us. May the Lord bless you and keep you in His work.